Good evening. Hi. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll try to be brief. Um, I'm going to be a little bit of a cliche here. I'm going to talk to you about Thanksgiving. Amen. What a shocker. Um, but the reason for that, all joking aside, is because I've been thinking about um, some things that have been happening to me, not only in the past few uh, days and weeks, but overall, since I made my decision to become a Christian. So I want to start by reading from Jeremiah chapter 29, and I'm going to read verses 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I was talking to someone yesterday, a friend of mine, and I was telling her how I used to be this antisocial person. Antisocial, excuse me. Uh, you know, I avoided being um, with people. I try to be by myself most of the time. And, and you know, it's no surprise with an attitude like that that I was married for as long as I was. Um, but the Lord changed me. And now I am, you know, she was telling me that she has a hard time believing that I was that, that, I was that way because she told me that I'm a little bit of a chatty Kathy the other day, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, I I do like my, my moments of peace and quiet and, and being alone. Amen. But I cannot see myself now not being around people. And and you know, when we gather here for special occasions um, other than our our weekly services, I really enjoy those things. And and I don't know. I feel like now I. I actually feel more comfortable in, in those uh, circumstances than I that I am actually uh, being alone. So I'm very thankful that when I made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that all this transition process started um, in me when he started giving me all this revelation through his word and through the people that I have been meeting over this past uh, two or three years having conversations with pastor and, and listening to teaching uh, series from from all the pastors that have been recommended and, and things like that and the things that you preach you know all of those things combined uh, have been the plans that the Lord had for me yeah. so that I could get to know him so I'm very thankful you know that um, you know his timing is perfect and there's no coincidence that I came to this place when I came to this place rather than before. Um, I know that he had been calling me for a long time. I just didn't answer. Um, the one thing that I have also learned is that the promises that he makes us are going to come to pass. We just have to be patient, but we have to make sure that we endure whatever it is that poor decisions that we make uh, you know bring to, to our lives as well as what the enemy thro is throwing at us I lost my turn of thought I'm sorry uh, But the reason why I'm also thankful is because I have seen how these promises that he made me have been coming to pass. You know, Amen. There's a lot of good things that are happening to me right now. And, and because of what's happening and my closeness to God, I know the, the devil is going to be really hardcore. They're trying to get me down. And I know I'm going to stumble and, and fall, but God is always there extending his hand to me so he could pull me up so I was reading Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 it says and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up well I'm not giving up 
I was, uh, as you know, I'm doing this fitness program. It, it lasts for, for 10 weeks. And I already signed up to continue for another year. And as I was thinking, I, I saw an image that I posted in the Facebook uh, group for, for my specific class. Uh, I was thinking, you know, I have given up on so many things in my life. I just decided to quit. But that one, I'm going to see through to the end because I'm going to get to where I'm supposed to be. And this is also something that I am not going to quit. I am not going to quit following God. I'm not going to quit being his child. I'm not going to quit pursuing him Amen. and walking the path that he has laid in yeah. front of me for me yeah. to walk or me to be where he wants me to be yeah. so that his will, not only for my life, but for those that I am supposed to encounter along the way, mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah. Amen. Uh, so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for for my family. You know, all my family is uh, either in other states or back home in Puerto Rico. But I think this is the first time since I have been here that I don't feel alone, that I don't feel lonely. Yeah. Um, yes, Lord. Yeah. And, and you guys are my family. I am so thankful for this church because this is where I actually learned to be a Christian. And I love you guys with all my heart. Yeah. You guys are my family. Lord. I'll move heaven and earth for you if, if, if I can. If you need me to, um, I'm just so appreciative for for all the things that that are happening. And to me, that's what what Thanksgiving is all about. That's right. Uh, it doesn't matter what you have, what you don't have, is is the people around you and what's in your heart yeah. what's important. Mm -hmm. And I know that Holy Spirit is in me, my heart. I try to continue to fill it with the word of God so that from the abundance of it I can speak what I'm supposed to speak um, and continue to, to to be the best person that I can be and I continue to be pleasing in, in God's eyes so tomorrow when you're with your loved ones and uh, your families, friends and all that just remember how good God is I know we all do every day thank him every day um, this is just a holiday that we as a society celebrate in a specific date mm -hmm. but I'm just that's what I'm thankful for amen. that's, that's my thanksgiving prayer for amen. this year amen thank you Lord <laughs> any prayer requests testimonies Mike uh, I just thank you guys for offering Thank you, uh, Lord, for providing uh, a breath of fresh air for her lungs and, and uh, the restoration that's already on its way and has been happening in the last 36 hours. Uh, it, it seemed like the enemy was trying to cause some destruction, but uh, through the wisdom of the Lord being rained down a little bit, I was able to understand what was going on and, and uh, confront the situation physically and on the spirit level also. So I took you guys to stand with me to have this thing start turning around and, and uh, Cindy's doing three times better than she has in the last four days and, and uh, her oxygen levels uh, seem to be gradually went up to exactly where they need to be and, and the coughing is lessened down to about down to maybe 15% of what it was and uh, for the first night trying since last Friday night this first night she's been able to get some sleep, um, which means I get sleep too. Then. <laughs> um, and it's kind of it's kind of strange that uh, her major her first major attack was at six o'clock on uh, Friday night, right in the middle of prayer by the winter act, and uh, that confirms uh, what was going on. So just thank the Lord for and you guys for the restoration and, and uh, what's going on.
most of them up here, you know, the job situation keeps getting worse and exactly. he's getting really discouraged. Um, yeah. And also my friend, um, Grant Pfeiffer, his dad actually passed away today, which I was really shocked when I saw that. Uh, just kind of sad, you know. Yeah. They're getting ready to celebrate this day tomorrow and then all of a sudden, boom, they get this hit. So for peace and comfort for him and his family, uh, you know, that comforts, covers them and, and gives them that peace. Yeah, Anyone else? On once, on twice? Let's stand. <coughs> oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. And thank you, Lord, because every day we can come to you and give you thanks for all of the great and wonderful things that you have done for us and that you give us, the plans that you have for us to give us a future and hope. We know, Lord, that you have given us promises to each one of us individually as well as in the Bible, the promises that are for all of those that believe in you, Lord. And we know, Father, that those promises are going to come to pass because you are faithful, Lord, and you cannot lie. We thank you, Father, because you bring us together every day. And whenever we gather together, we are in your presence, Lord. And you manifest and, and your mighty words, Lord, are manifested among us. Heaven comes to earth. Lord. Father, we pray for all of those that are not here. That you keep them safe and protected wherever they go. We pray for those that are in need of a breakthrough for Peter this job situation, Lord, we know that you're going to take care of him. We know that this oppression, this, the circumstances that he's facing right now, Lord, you are going to take care on his behalf because he believes in you and he's your child and he trusts you, Lord. I pray, Father, for those that are in need of continued healing, Cindy, Leah, Sally, all of those that are suffering from sort of, some sort of ailment or comfort, Lord, in their body that is healed right now in your name. We continue to declare that healing that you have given us through your finished work on the cross. I also pray, Lord, for Grant and his family, that you bring them comfort right now in this difficult time when they lost their father. We thank you, Lord, because of your goodness, for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit, for being so good to us, Lord. I was talking to my friend at work this morning and I was sharing some things with her and I was telling her how how good God has been to me and I told her when you have a God that is so good to you the way he is how can you not help but to love him you know uh, Have a blessed Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. <laughs> there's no such thing as eating too much on Thanksgiving. That's why there's a button in your pants. So you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why God created elastic. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> Let's pick the word. <laughs> Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. And there we go. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created its function. 
And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, this thing's going crazy. Here we go. Be healed. There you go. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord reviews the Bible for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now resolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine.
love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. Thank you, Lord, that you've revealed yourself to us. Thank you that we know you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for every known thing that you've done and all the unknown that you're doing. We're so grateful, Lord. You are a good God, a great and a mighty God. And we are so grateful to know you, to be loved by you, and to love you in return. Bless us tonight, Lord. Bless us as we go about our day tomorrow with family, with friends. Even if we happen to be alone, Lord, we won't be alone. We're never alone, but you're always with us. Help us, Lord, to ever be thankful every day, every minute of every day for all the good that you bring into our lives, for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Appreciate everybody that came out tonight. Amen. Thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to, because you've been so good, I'm going to be brief. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure you got stuffing to cook or a bird to burn or something. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. I just, I, it's amazing to me when we think about, you know, we're laughing about having buttons on our pants and elastic and sweatpants and everything. And it's just amazing how that God has blessed this country. And, uh, and most of that is due to the founding fathers who were far from perfect, but they did honor God and did recognize that it was because of him that this country would exist. And uh, it's because of him that it continues to exist. And we don't just exist, we are blessed by any standard, if you go anywhere else in the world. I mean, there are people in this country, obviously, and sadly, that uh, will go hungry tonight, and uh, they won't be worried about overeating. They'll just be worried about if they eat. So, uh, we have very much to be thankful for, yes. and, uh, and I am truly thankful to the Lord for it. Praise God. So with that in mind, I, I want to talk to you about thanks. Amen. Uh, the, those of you that know me know I don't preach, uh, rarely ever do theme kind of messages because it's just, I mean, it's kind of hard to get God to just give you a message for a holiday, praise the Lord, if you know what I mean. Uh, he kind of has his own agenda. But uh, I think thankfulness, as uh, Tim has so wisely said, is always uppermost in God's mind. And uh, so... We're going to talk about that for a little bit tonight. Amen. And let's begin that with uh, Luke chapter 6, and we'll read verses 47 through 49. Luke 6, 47 through 49. <clears throat> Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was found upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. All right, now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 18 and 19. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 and 19. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We just heard that, that uh, in the, the little parable about the house and the foundation and so forth, and Jesus said, whoever, whoever hears me and then does what I say, it's like somebody that's got a good foundation, right? And that's what he's saying. And everything give thanks because this is what God's saying to us. This is the will of God. This is how we get a good foundation. Amen. The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, 
uh, building a building, you always, uh, depending on the size of the building, of course, but any kind of a foundation has pilings. And you drive those down. It's like even if you build a deck, you've got to have pilings. You've got to get it in the ground, get something solid there to hold whatever it is you build upon. Wow. Well, it's true uh, of, of any building, but uh, building a building, the foundation is critical because if the foundation's off, everything else is off. Praise the Lord. So first thing, you pilings are driven deep to strengthen the foundation. Praise God. Now, thankfulness is a piling. And it's a piling that needs to be driven deep. It doesn't come automatically, and it usually doesn't come easy. Now, it's easy to be thankful when you've got everything going, right? But there are times in our lives when everything doesn't look like it. It's something you want to shout about and say, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this attack. Amen. But that's part of the problem. We need to, we need to have this as a foundation, Thanks, thankfulness. Thanksgiving has to be a foundation. Praise God. Amen. It has to be driven deep because it doesn't come automatic. And sometimes it's not easy. I remember when I was a kid, uh, we were always taught, well, several things we were taught. One was to be seen and not heard. And other things were to always be polite and to be thankful. Now, you know how kids are. A lot of times you're running around and somebody will come and they'll give you a, a treat or they'll give you this or give you that. And like a kid, you just grab it and run and want to play with it or do something with it, right? Well, my mother was not an abusive mother, but uh, she, she did have her ways of getting our attention. And uh, she'd give you a little swat on the back of the head and say, thank you. Right? I mean, that's just the way it was. We were taught to be thankful when people do things for you. Whenever anybody would do something, you were supposed to say thank you. And so we would say thank you. Amen. Now, God doesn't slap us around, but he does appreciate our thanks. Amen. Amen. So what is God's will for us? We saw what he said right here. Amen. The will of God is simply give thanks in everything. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. People are always saying, I just wish I knew what the will of God was. I can tell you what the will of God is. Give thanks. Thank Him. I don't care what the situation is. Thank Him anyway. Amen. He's, he's got a, a better view of what's going on than we have. We're kind of limited to what we can see right here, the three dimensions. But God can see it all. Amen. He knows everything in from the beginning. Praise the Lord. So yeah, I know it's difficult because we ask ourselves, okay, how can I be thankful when I got problems? Right? Somebody steals your wallet, for example. Are you supposed to be thankful for evil, for a thief? Hmm? No, because God isn't thankful for evil. Amen. And what God says has to agree with God, with his reality, with who he is and what he is. So the key is to be thankful through every situation. Not for the situation, but be thankful through the situation. Amen. Or even... Whatever it might be, in the midst of whatever the thing is going on, be thankful. Yep. You don't have to be thankful for the bad thing, but you have to be thankful in the midst of that thing. Praise God. Now, God sees the big picture, as I said. He sees all the circumstances that come our way. And here's his promise, Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. And everything give thanks, right? That is how a foundation of thankfulness is created. The sooner you start, the better. Because I promise you, stuff's going to happen. Now, I don't want to... But I, I just won't go there because I don't want to get personal about this. But, you know, we have all had situations and circumstances that we didn't want to be in. Right. And, and really, we didn't create the situation. We just find ourselves in it, right? Uh -huh. Sometimes we do foolish things and that creates problems. But there are times when stuff just happens. Amen. And it just, you know, it, it just blows your mind. Well, if you don't have a foundation then, right, when a bad thing comes... We fold up like a cheap suitcase. We need to have a foundation of thankfulness so that no matter what we're going through, we can still be thankful because we know that somehow 
No matter how screwed up this thing looks, no matter how bad it seems at the time, God is going to make that thing turn around for our good. In everything. He said, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. He doesn't say that everything is good. He just says everything will work out for your good. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, in everything, give thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 and 19. We just read this. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. I find it interesting that that is right in that same context. You know, give thanks in everything. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Quench not the spirit. Amen. Amen. Giving thanks protects our spirit. Praise the Lord. It keeps it in tune with God. It keeps it sensitive to God. It keeps it aware, conscious of God. Amen? Now, I know our spirit is connected. I'm I'm using maybe a little bit of a euphemism here, but I'm just saying that to be in touch with your spirit is something that we have to do. And one way that we can do that is by being thankful all the time. Your spirit's thankful, I promise you. But this protects you from the the way the enemy twists and, and deceives through the natural. Praise the Lord. Giving thanks protects our spirit. You you cannot wait to win the lottery to be thankful. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can't wait till you get your promotion to be thankful. You can't wait for the new job to be thankful. I, I... I've been in those situations. I've had some good jobs, and I've had some really bad jobs. I mean, some really bad jobs. But I've learned to be thankful in whatever I was in. In fact, when I was on the road, uh, I think I may have told this before, but I'll I'll tell you anyway. Um, I hated this job. Four or five days a week and nights, I was on the road. It paid pretty good money, but it was just, it was, it was awful. People were cheating, finagling, manipulating all the time, and you try to be honest and you try to be straight, and of course that's difficult to do because the system is set up for something else. Now, God took care of me and provided for us, but at the same time, I hated it. I hated every minute of it, but I did it. I went out every day. I was on the road at 6 o'clock in the morning, no matter where I was at, what hotel I was staying in or whatever, I'd be out on the road at 6 o'clock so I could be at my first stop by 8 o'clock at the latest. And I'd go till 6, 7 o'clock at night. Then I'd have to go back to the hotel. I'd have to type up my stuff and fax it back to the uh, main office in Indianapolis. And uh, then I'd have to do the same thing on the weekends. I'd have to catch up on everything, all the paperwork, every every sales call, every... uh, sale that I made, every potential sale that I would have for the next time. I had to have all that stuff out there. Everything that I had ordered, I had to be sure that it was in the warehouse or that it was on the road. It was already being shipped to who it was supposed to be to so I didn't upset the customer who's waiting on it and so on and so forth. So I, it was just, it, it seemed like it never ended. You just, I had my own warehouse that I had to load stuff in and out of uh, over by Bondurant. It was a storage, a double big storage unit. And what wasn't shipped from the factory was shipped to me, and then I would deliver something simply because it was just more expedient than waiting on them to, to bring stuff. And uh, so I had to maintain that and make sure I had the inventory that I was supposed to have and keep that all arranged. And it was, it was just, it never ended. It was just always something. And I can remember many, many nights, 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And again, I gotta be, I'm going to be up by 5 o'clock because I've got to be on the road by 6. And I'd be kneeling by that bed. And literally weeping. <laughs> I mean, with tears, not boo-hoo crying, but just disgusted, wore out, tired, n- not liking the job, but knowing this is your job, this is what you got to do. And I'd say, Lord, and I can remember saying verbatim, Lord, I'll do this job till I die or till I retire. I hate it. I don't like it. I don't want it. You gave it to me. 
and I'm going to do it until you give me something else. I'm not just going to go change jobs because I could. Because when I was praying for a job, that's the job I got. You understand what I'm saying? So God was doing something with me. I know what he was doing now. He was trying to get me so disgusted and fed up with secular work that I'd go back to the ministry. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I, we learned that through prayer and some other things. But I'm just saying, I know what it is to have a job that is just consuming you. I mean, it just takes everything out of you and, does, and gives you very little satisfaction back. So, but if you're unthankful, it's dangerous. Only if you're thankful for what you have can God give you more. We limit God. And I'm not, I'm not unsympathetic to people that are struggling with horrible situations because I've been in plenty of them myself. But I have learned, honestly, I've learned, be thankful. And I would say, thank you, Lord. My bills are paid. The, the mortgage is going to be paid this month. The car payment will be paid this month. Amen. There is food in the house. Amen. There's gas in the car. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it, you didn't have to give me the job. I could be on welfare. I could be on, you know, unemployment. I, I could be, you know, just doing odd jobs, doing whatever, just trying to get by. But you've made it possible for me to have a decent income here. So I'm not going to be ungrateful for that, but I'm not going to be a liar because you know my heart. So I don't like it. But I'll do it until you give me something better, until you open a door, until I know that it's you that's doing it. Praise God. So giving thanks, it, it protects our spirit. And everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Quench not the spirit. Praise the Lord. Be grateful in whatever you find yourself in. You don't have to be grateful for it, but be grateful as you go through it, as you transition through it. Praise the Lord. Same way with sickness. When I had hepatitis C, I walked that bike path for over a year, every, at least every other day, if not every day. And I just confessed what the Word of God said. You sent your Word and delivered me, or healed me, and delivered me from my destruction. You, uh, by your stripes, I was healed. I mean, over and over and over. That's all I do while I was walking. And I thank the Lord that I was still upright. Amen. That even though... The VA is telling me at some point you're going to have to have a liver transplant. There's no cure. There's this, 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 and all that stuff. And I just kept confessing and kept saying what God said and kept thanking God that I wasn't feeling pain. I wasn't going through a lot of, you know, physical stuff. It was, it, it was all internal. You couldn't see it. It was going on. It just wasn't visible from the outside. Amen? I was still thankful for what I had, for where I was. And one day I walk in. To see the doctor, they sent me to the specialist saying the doctor wasn't there, but in fact, the specialist is sitting there with all of my files in front of him and said, Nathan, if I didn't have a year's worth of records of blood tests and liver scans on you, I'd have to say you never had hepatitis C. Glory, Glory. If I'd have waited for that, I might still be waiting. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, was, I wasn't thankful that I had it. I wasn't happy about it. I was, I was uncomfortable with it. I was even, uh, even a little frightened by it. But I was still thankful that I still got breath. I'm still feeling all right. I'm still, everything's still going, and I can still pray. I can still talk to the Lord. I can still believe God. And he delivered me from my destruction. Amen? And in the natural, I deserved the hepatitis C because of the drugs and the alcohol and everything I'd done for years as a, you know, when I was 25 years old. So it wasn't like in the natural... I got what I had coming. It's like somebody that smokes all their life and then gets cancer. You can't blame God, right? right. But people still get healed. People still get delivered. Yes. Praise God. We need to be thankful, not for it, but in it. Praise God. Yes. Being thankful, I think it's one of the best ways to open the floodgates of heaven. Mm -hmm. When you're thankful, it's like God can't hardly help but want to give you something else, to give you more, to do more. Amen? He's a good God all the time. But when we show thanks, when we show that we recognize whatever is coming is coming from you, Lord. The good is coming from you. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of life with whom there's no uh, variableness, no shadow of turning. God is giving us blessings and good things all the time. And the more we are grateful for that, the more we are thankful for it, the more he keeps pouring out. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Yes. Thank Jesus. 2 Corinthians 9 uh, verses 8 through 15. 
2 Corinthians 9, verses 8 through 15. Praise God. <coughs> if we don't discipline ourselves in this sense, to be thankful, to get it in our minds to be thankful in spite of what we're seeing, it's difficult to get out of things that you're just grumbling about. How many of you know God isn't moved by mumbling or murmuring or complaining? It doesn't do you any, It might make you feel a little better for a moment, but it doesn't change a thing. Amen? It's thankfulness, amen, that really God responds to because it's a, it's a way of saying, I trust you, Lord. It's a way of saying, I, I expect something good is going to happen because you're a good God. Even if everything looks bad right now, it doesn't mean it has to stay this way. It, it was good before it got bad. That's proof enough to me that things change. Well, if it changed to get bad, it can change to get good. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Now, this is something I think is interesting. And I, I don't want to confuse people about grace. Grace is a free gift. But grace flows like a river in thankfulness. Yes. Grace on grace. Grace for grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Hallelujah. That's grace. Praise the Lord. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Yes. So you could almost say it like this. God blesses us because he likes to be thanked. He likes thankfulness. It's a way of us to interact with God. Amen? For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Abundance comes from thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. While... By the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection under the gospel of Christ, or submitting yourself to grace, to God's goodness, and for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men. Mm. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. All these things are all intertwined with thanksgiving, with thanks. God is a good God, and he likes us to express our thankfulness or our realization of how good he is. And we do that by thanking, by being thankful, no matter what it is we're going through. If you practice, I mean, it's like an art. It really is. If you practice, so we'll just say, if you practice the art of thankfulness, even if it doesn't seem like you've got a whole lot to be thankful for right then, amen, good things happen. Things will work out. Things will work out together for your good. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 9, 11, 12. Which we just read a moment ago, but let's look at it again. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Thankfulness brings contentment. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a fresh eye through which you look at life. <coughs> Praise the Lord. If you're really thankful, if you really uh, are thankful to God going through whatever it is you're going through, it, it causes you to look at things through the Spirit. Amen? Because obviously, if you're looking at a bad situation, it's hard to be thankful when you're looking and seeing the same thing over and over. But if you're thankful, just forget about the, the situation, just be thankful. It's like God gives you spiritual vision. Mm -hmm. He gives you the ability to see the way God sees. That this is a momentary thing. It's temporary. It's not going to last. Something good has to come as a result of this. Amen? Somehow, and that's the beauty of it, somehow God is going to turn this thing around 
and you are going to get blessed. Amen? In spite of what it looks like. So be thankful now. It doesn't, it, it takes no faith to just to live by faith. It takes no faith to be thankful after you get the result, after you get the answer. Faith is saying, thank you, Jesus, when everything looks like it's going to hell in a handbasket. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you look at these, this, these two scriptures in particular that we just read, when you, when you look at things through that perspective, through that mindset, bountifulness, abundance, more grace, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, more bounty. Thanksgiving, more grace. Thanksgiving, more abundance. That's what he's saying. Praise the Lord. The more thankful we are, the more heaven releases. Praise the Lord. Now, we know that God has, he wants to bless everybody. He's not a respecter of persons. Everybody, want, God wants to bless. But if we, if we can't believe for the blessing, faith is what moves God's hand. And thankfulness is a way of declaring faith unlike anything else. Because we can say whatever we want to say. Thank you, Jesus. Gimme, gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy. I'll take all you gimme. Or you can just be thankful with whatever is going on, not content in the sense that, you know, uh, I, I don't ever want to aspire to something more than this, but while I'm here, it's gonna, I'm going to thank God that I'm here and not there. Praise the Lord. And then I can move up. Then I can have an opportunity for greater things, for God to open greater doors and greater opportunities. Amen. But if I'm grumbling, if I'm complaining, if I'm whining because this is bad, this is not getting better, it looks horrible, amen, without any thankfulness, I don't know if I'm going to be sensitive enough when God speaks to me that this door is opening for you to go this direction, that I'm going to hear it. Why? Because I almost am feeling like God is part of the problem. I mean, think about this. This is not an indictment to anybody, but I'm just saying... If you're, if you're a believer and you're a Christian, and I'm not saying there aren't stuff that happen that causes us to question and to go, what in the world is going on here? But we've got to be careful what comes out of our mouth. Amen? We've got to be able to say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I, I, I used to work with a guy when before, uh, right after we got uh, saved, right after we received baptism of the Holy Spirit and so on and so forth, we were down in East Texas, and I was working for a steel mill. Actually, I didn't work for the steel mill. I worked for a company that contracted to the steel mill, and we hauled scrap iron. They'd bring scrap iron up the, uh, the uh, channel from uh, the Houston uh, port, port of Houston, up the, up the channel to, uh, well, Viter, Texas, right on the, the river there, the Sabine. And uh, they would unload with these huge magnets. They had these huge cranes. These magnets were as, as big as that whole area there. And they would just drop it into these barges, and pick up, you know, all the iron would stick to it, and they'd swing it around and drop it in your truck, and then you'd haul it down into the yard and dump it in certain places, or else they'd mag it off the truck and melt it down and make steel and billets and coils and all this kind of stuff. Well, this guy that was, uh, in fact, he was a member of the church that we, that we were part of there, uh, and, and he was the, uh, the mechanic for all the, for the fleet, for all the trucks. They had straight trucks, they had dump trucks, they had uh, flatbed truck. They had tr uh, big tractor trailers that they hauled steel and stuff on too. So had all, all kinds of tr trucks and equipment. And he was one of the mechanics. Uh, J.E. Gould was his name. Great, a great guy. A rough old guy, but he had been saved and really transformed his life. And he'd be in there working on an engine and he'd smash his finger. I've seen him do it more than once. Or he'd cut it on something, trying to get in there, you know, trying to work around. He'd cut his hand or he'd smash a finger or something. He'd go... Thank you, Jesus! And it was his way of not saying something else. You know what I'm saying? But it, I, I, when the first time I heard it, I thought, oh my God, this guy's nuts, you know? Come on, you can't be thankful that you just mashed a finger and lost a nail and, you know, who knows what else. But 
you know what I'm saying? It, he, was, he was putting down pilings. He was laying a foundation that no matter what happens, I'm going to thank the Lord. Amen? It looks crazy to other people, but it worked. It worked for him. And it taught me something right off the bat. We don't, we don't do this for other people's approval. This is between us and God. And I don't care how crazy it looks to somebody else that I'm thanking God when I've got a terminal disease. Or I'm thanking God when I don't have enough money to pay the bills. And I'm still thankful. I'm still thanking God. Why? Because I know the only way anything's going to change is by God. I can't do it. If I could, I wouldn't be in the same already. I'd already have moved on to something else. But it shows God that I'm trusting, that I'm going to trust you to get me through this. You give me the strength to do what i got to do now, amen, and give me the wisdom to see when you open the door for something else. We, I, I, I was praying. I knew Sally didn't want me to go back in the ministry because, not, not because she didn't want me going back in the ministry, but because we nearly went broke the first time around. I mean, the church was, you know, it was a startup church, and uh, there wasn't anybody. It was just her and I, our daughter, and the neighbor kid. Yeah, I was preaching in the Legion Hall, and I had a milk cart in those old steel things that they carried milk, used to carry milk in, and I had it flipped upside down with a tablecloth over it, with a doily-like thing over the top of it for a pulpit. Mm. That's what we did for well, over a year or so. We got a few people together, but there was no money. I mean, no, you know, the people that first get saved, they're all messed up. They don't, have, they don't have money. They don't have a job. Most of them are in debt. Most of them got drug issues and all kinds of other stuff. They, they really can't help you. So I worked a full-time job plus the church, and it took my, and I, please don't misunderstand. God knows. I'm not complaining. But the, uh, I had to take money out of my job that I worked for Eagle Ironworks, I had to take money from that to keep the church going. Because the people who went to the church, they didn't have any money. They, I mean, they just needed God, but they had to get on their feet and get to where they could trust God before they could get a decent job and have some kind of income and get you know, to a place where they could help to support the, the church. But that went on for a number of years. And we had several different buildings over, the, over that time. And then when I left that organization, not because of finances, but because of a, you know, a kind of a disagreement in, in what I was going to preach. I had to sign an agreement saying I'll only preach this doctrine, and half of that doctrine wasn't biblical, and you know, I wasn't going to send people to hell, but it was sure going to confuse them and mess them up. And So I finally I just said, okay, I'm, I'm just done. But I'm saying that because when it was a very stressful time for Sally. As a, uh, you know, Tim, you guys know this. If you preach, there's something that comes with the anointing when you preach. God enables you to do it. Well, Sally didn't get that. She wasn't preaching. She was just dealing with the negative side of it in terms of the finances and how we're going to make this work and stretch it out and everything else. I'd get the opportunity to preach a couple, three times a week at least. And so I'd get kind of a boost from the Lord and, a, and the anointing comes. And it, it really does. I mean, I can tell you many, many times I got up here feeling like just horribly, you know, sick. And before I'm through preaching, I forget that I even was sick. I walk out of here and I feel great. So it's, it's therapeutic as well as being, you know, what God calls you to do. But there's just something that goes along with it. Well, Sally just got the kind of the bad end. She got all the complaints from people and they, you know, they'd go to her because they didn't want to say anything to me. You know, a lot of times people, they, uh, they'd prefer to, uh, to, 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 to say bad things to somebody else and let them bring it to you rather than <laughs> Themselves. Praise the Lord. So she got most of the negative vibes, and I just got the cold shoulder. Although a few people did run out the front door on us, but that's another story. Praise the Lord. But I'm just saying, when it come time, then I had been offered to to come back, and and I really didn't want to at the time. I didn't. I, I was afraid that the people were just going to be a bunch of angry people that had left the organization that I left. I didn't leave in anger. I just left up over a you know what I felt to be a spiritual truth that God was trying to reveal to me. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> but I was afraid that these are just going to be angry people that are mad at the church that they left, and they're just going to carry that anger and bitterness over into another church, and that'll just be like a virus, you know. 
So I was concerned, but yet I felt pulled in both directions. So I prayed this prayer. Sally didn't know it. I never said anything to her about it. She knew that, that, that it had been offered uh, to take the church, but we never talked about it beyond that because she was there when they offered pain. But anyway, I'm, so I'm praying, and I said, okay, Lord, here's the deal. You know my wife. You gave her to me, and I love her, and I'm not going to do anything that's going to create a, an issue here for us, and I don't think you want me to. I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine that you would want me to. So if you want me, if this is you that's telling me, that it's not just some people wanting me to take this church, but if this is you telling me to take this church, then you have to talk to Sally because I'm not going to. Well, I came home on a Friday, and this is the truth. We never, we hadn't talked about it. And I came home on a Friday night uh, after being gone all week. And when I came in, I got out my computer and messing around with this to send some stuff back to Indianapolis again. And she said, you know, I think you're supposed to take that church. Just like that. Well, I shut the computer and quit the next day. <laughs> or gave my, gave my notice the next day. Because I knew it was the Lord. Because I knew that in the natural, it wasn't something that she was really wanting to go through again. Right? So I knew she wasn't just saying this to be nice. Or, and I hadn't really made a big deal out of it like, oh, I really got to do this. I was just leaving it to the Lord. So I knew God had spoken to her. And by virtue of that, I knew he had spoken to me. Now, and I left that job, and I won't go through the financial part of it, but it was a decent job. It paid good. Took the church, and the Lord said, I want you to pastor a church. I don't want you to work a secular job and then preach on Wednesdays and Sundays. So I said, okay, tell Sally that. <laughs> but, uh, we were in a trailer park, uh, Suzanne remembers, out on the south side, clear out by the airport in, this, in the community center, basically, for the, for the trailer park, which we rented. And uh, so I said, all right, Lord, but, you know, I got the same bills. I have the same responsibilities that I had when I was working that job that was paying good money. Mm -hmm. Now I'm taking a church that has, I don't remember at the time, maybe 12, 50 people or something. And, of course, half of them left as soon as I took the church. <laughs> we had revival. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, I mean, at least close to half of them left uh, right after I took over. So that was a real <clears throat> blessing. But nevertheless, I said, okay, Lord, but so I'm just going. I'm going every day. And we live where we live now, which is 30 miles from here. Right. So I was driving an hour one way right. every day, back and forth, just like it was a you know, 8 to 4.30 or 8 to 5 job. I'd go in the morning, I'd stay all day, I'd come home at night. I'd pray. There wasn't a whole lot of other things to do other than clean the bathrooms. So <laughs> I'd spend time in prayer and reading the Bible. And it, it was amazing how, and it was a bit of a struggle. I, we did end up doing some uh, construction, cleaning construction sites and different things because I wasn't going to take another full-time job. I would do this because we could do that kind of, you know, and make, enough money to keep things going. I painted a couple of houses out in the area where we live. They were building new houses just up north of us. So I job painted a couple of houses exterior, painted houses up there. And, and we did all right. I mean, we were, we were all right. We were keeping the wolf away from the door. You know, we were keeping the bills paid. We weren't getting ahead, but we were eking it out. We had to trust God. So when we moved here, uh, you know, we were thankful. We were just grateful. I, I was glad that God was moving. I didn't know where he was going. I didn't know how he was going. I was trying to leave one doctrine, a, do, a lot of doctrinal things, and because God had told me, he said, unless you pick this Bible up and read it as though you've never read it before, you're not going anywhere but where you've already been. And that was when I resigned and left, left the organization. So I knew God was doing different things, but I didn't know what, and I didn't even know where to begin. So I just tried to be obedient. So we ended up coming over, one of the ladies who was in the church there, I'm just talking about being thankful, okay? So we're being thankful. And uh, this gal calls up, and she was, she was an apprentice in a, a real estate program, or not an apprentice, but, you know, like she was trying to get a real estate license, and she couldn't 
uh, she had to work with somebody else until she had enough uh, information to where she could pass the realtor's license and so on and so forth. But in the meantime, she was working with another realtor, splitting you know whatever they would make off their deals. And she called me up because she's trying to get her license and she's trying to get somebody to look at this property. And it was this church. And uh, so she called up and asked if we'd be interested. And I said, well, and we had like about three or $4,000 in the bank. The church did, I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, <laughs> I really just did it for her, I thought. I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll help her out and at least give her a showing so she can see how yeah, we showed it to somebody. So I had a couple of guys from the church, John and Don, and I can't remember who else. But anyway, they came over because I... Uh, my church, I mean, it's the church's church, so they come, we looked at it, they showed us around, and it didn't look much like this. It was pretty messed up at the time, but, uh, and uh, they were asked, I forget now, I think it was like 58, 59,000 or something, and uh, which was, might as well have been a million, because we didn't have it, and there wasn't anybody going to loan us $60,000 for a church, you know, that we couldn't pay for, basically. But I told her, I said, yeah, we'll come look at it. So we looked at it, and uh, we looked at it, and I, I made him an offer. I lowballed him, <laughs> which, I mean, I said, okay, we'll give you 50. And you're only talking 59, so that's a big bite, you know, out of what they were asking. And, uh, and it made some people mad because they thought I was, you know, I was being rude to the person for offering them that low price, you know. And they got upset about it, and I said, well, look, you know, here's the deal. I never paid the asking price for anything, I don't think, in my life. I mean, that's part of the deal, isn't it? I mean, they're trying to get so much, and you're trying to get it for so much. That's the whole, you know, ball game. That's what it's sales, and, you know, that's what it's all about. So you always try to get the best deal. I try to get the best deal for me. I try to get the best deal for my family. Why would I do any different for the church? I mean, that just didn't make sense to me. You know, I wasn't trying to be a jerk. I was just trying to get a deal. Forgive me have some Hebrew roots. Amen. My father's a Jew. His name is Jesus, praise the Lord. So anyway, uh, I just, I remember going in that next, that following Sunday, because they had said, no, we're not going, there's a group from Chicago, a Hispanic group from Chicago that was also were wanting to buy it. So I came back and I just said, okay, I remember Sally and I talking about when we got home, I said, oh man, I hope I didn't blow this and let's pray and and we did. We prayed. We got to, I don't know what we're going to do, but let's pray. And then we come to the conclusion that here's what we're going to do. We're going to praise the Lord and thank him. And if we don't get this, we're going to pray that this Hispanic group gets it and has tremendous revival. Because it'll only mean that God has something else for us. Right. right? So that's what we did. I came into the church that Sunday, and that's what I said. That's why I laid out before him. I said, here's what we're going to do. If we don't get it, they'll get it. If they get it, we're going to pray that they have revival, that God just blesses them and uh, they're able to minister and do whatever it is God wants to do with them. Amen. So it wasn't but about, I don't know, a week maybe later, the gal calls me back and said, okay, they, they backed out because they couldn't get over. The guy that was selling it was on his way to the Philippines to open up some schools, to start some schools for a, uh, a, a church organization there. And he had to get out of the country. He had to be there within a week or 10 days or something. So it had to be a fast deal. It had to be done. So <clears throat> she said, uh, if you'll come back up on your price, he'll, he'll sell it. So I thought, okay, now I'm, now I'm really in a mess because I can't buy it anyway. <laughs> so I get a phone call. And the guy says, look, here's what we'll do. We'll buy it and then sell it back to you on contract. So you don't have to go worry about getting a loan from the bank or anybody else. We'll go ahead and buy it, and then, then the church can buy it back on a, on a contract basis. So I said, okay, great, let's go for it. So we did. Bought it, recited it, redid the whole inside, and uh, of course, eventually we changed lights and all kinds of other things. But nevertheless, uh, about a month went by, maybe six weeks, and they still hadn't set anything up with the lawyer for the contract. Now I'm feeling really uncomfortable because I feel like I'm manipulating people or that I'm taking advantage, right? I'm grateful. I'm thankful to God, but I don't want to look like a cheapskate that's trying to rip somebody off either. So I, I told him, I said, look, 
you know, I, I'm not comfortable with this. We need to get something settled so that we are paying for this and not you. Because right. this is the church, and that's where it's supposed to, you know, we're supposed to be doing this. <clears throat> okay, we'll get with the lawyer. The next Sunday they came in the office and said, uh, look, we had a meeting at the, uh, at the business that they have. And all of the family came together, and it wasn't brought up by the, by the people that come to this church, but by other family members that are co-owners of the business that loaned the money in the first place. Mm -hmm. And they said, I just believe we're supposed to give that church to them. Yeah. 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 They gave it. We, we don't owe anything on this church. It's paid for. So I'm thankful. I was thankful before that. But I had no idea what God really had in mind. Amen? Now, we, you know, obviously we've still got utilities and insurance and all the other stuff. But we don't have to pay a mortgage payment on this, which is the only reason we can operate here with the small number of people that we have. Mm -hmm. Amen? And I can still do this and only this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because what the income that comes in is not great, but it's enough. Because we don't have to pay a thousand dollar a month mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. God no, I didn't know that when I did it. I didn't know how it was going to work out. I had no idea if it even could work out. It didn't make any sense in the natural because I knew there's not going to be any income here. I don't know what we're going to live off of. But God said do it. I was sure that he said to do it. And uh, so we did. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, be thankful. You don't have any idea what God's trying to do. But I could have just complained and grumbled and, and so on and so forth. But at the same time that I'm kneeling and weeping over this horrible job that I've got, I'm saying, God, I'll do this till I drop over dead unless you open another door. There you go. I'm grateful for the job. I don't like it, but I'm grateful for it. And that's what I'm saying. I, I know how frustrating it can be. But if we don't learn to establish a, a sense of thanksgiving, a sense of thankfulness to God, it's really difficult to move anywhere with God. Because right. we are literally uh, saying, God, I don't trust you. Or I think you're doing bad stuff to me. Right? You're, you're confessing something that is totally untrue about God. Now, how can you have that relationship that God wants to have with you if you don't trust him? If you think he's out to hurt you or to damage you or to do bad for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, I've seen it in my life. I, I saw it from the very beginning. Hey, I, I was married three times. They were very brief marriages. <laughs> Obviously, praise the Lord. I'm not, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's pathetic. But it, that's, that was my life when I was in my 20s. I didn't care. I mean, I was just totally self-absorbed, drugs, you know, just, you know, out of the Marine Corps, crazy is what I was. And so when I went to be licensed, you know, there was a written test, an oral test, and then you had to go before the board. This is the Texas board. And nobody, I'm, except my pastor, believed that I would ever get licensed because of my past. He believed because the Lord told him. He was going to hire a guy, and I was changing signs and mowing grass and teaching uh, new converts and, and junior high Sunday school. And he called me in his office, and I thought, uh-oh, one of these kids have ratted me out, you know, like <laughs> bad doctrine or something. You know, half of them knew more than I did. But he said, I was going to hire this guy right out of Bible college, Houston Bible College. And uh, he said, but the Lord told me not to. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, what's he telling me this stuff for, you know? And uh, he, he said, and, I, and he said that he said to the Lord, well, why? And he said, because you've already got somebody. And this is how in tune he was with me. He said, who? <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord told him, Nathan. Now, that'll, that'll inspire you. Because I, my pastor was not a, you know, he was very by the book. Uh -huh. I mean, he was a spiritual guy, but he just didn't, he said, have a dream, call it a dream. Mm 
In other words, you know, I mean, he, that's the way he operated. If it was prophetic for him, if he knew that it was the Lord, that was one thing. But he just didn't pick up on every prophet that came through and every, you know, pr every prophecy that somebody would speak and so on and so forth. He was kind of paranoid almost to that point. So I knew he believed that it was the Lord. And all this time, I'd been praying and saying, Lord, I don't, you know, I, I feel like this is what I should do. It's what I want to do, but I don't believe I can do it. I don't want to, I mean, I'm just not comfortable with it, and I don't know anything. And Sally will tell you, the first few years that I preached, I, you couldn't hardly live with me. I would fast and pray for days and days and days for a youth service. I was just freaked out. I mean, I, I but I was grateful that Lord, the Lord was willing to use me even as screwed up as I was, you know, and God just opened doors. Amen. And I've seen people struggle and try and everything else. It happened for me because I think I was just grateful from the very beginning because I never really imagined a life past what I'd had. I mean, as far as broken relationships and, and all of that kind of stuff. Sally was like my little Jesus or mini Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, Tim talks about uh, Leah being his angel. I mean, I get it. You know, I don't talk about it. I'm usually teasing her more than I'm doing anything else. But I could have never done this if, if Sally hadn't been there with me. God knew that. Amen. He brought us together because he knew that was the only way this was going to work. Amen. Amen. And he never held it against me that I was such an idiot for all those years prior to that. Thank you, Lord. The past is the past. Amen. But I'm just saying, I don't know why I got off on all this, except that I am very thankful Amen. to the Lord for what he's done in my life and for me. Amen. It hasn't always looked like it was going to work out, like it was going to be everything that I thought it was going to be. And it isn't everything that I thought it would be now. But I'm still very thankful because I know what it can be. And whatever it is, if we're trusting God, he'll see us through it. He'll, 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 he'll give us the inspiration, the desire to do it. There's times, i got to tell you over the years, where I've just felt like, man, what's the point? You know, I, I don't really need the aggravation. But I can't just walk away from it. It's like it's part of you. It's, it's just not something you can just say, like a job that you get frustrated with because you didn't get your raise or the promotion or change to the departments or whatever, and just say, you know what, I'm going to move on to something else. I'm like the apostles when Jesus said, are, are you going to leave me too? And they said, where are we going to go? <coughs> <laughs> you're the one that has the words of life, you know. So, practice thankfulness. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 10, 7. No, I was going to really be brief, wasn't I? Praise the Lord. Well, there you go. Pray for me. I'm a liar. Hallelujah. I'm not a liar. I just lied. <laughs> Praise God. 2 Corinthians 10, 7. But I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to say, this is real. It isn't just something to talk about because it's Thanksgiving. I'm saying we don't have to have the three steps on how to do it. Just be thankful. Just thank the Lord and see if he won't pour out a blessing. Amen? That you can't even contain. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. So we look on the outward appearance. What you look at is what you're going to see. Praise the Lord. I know that's a revelation for you. But whatever you're looking at is what you're going to see. So we need to be looking at Jesus. Praise the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your situations may change. Your circumstances may rise and fall. He's the same. Stay focused on Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, back to Luke 46, 47 through 49. And we'll wrap it up here pretty quick. Praise the Lord. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to you, uh, show you to whom he is like. 
He's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, again, which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So the wind's going to blow. The rain is going to come. That's a guarantee. In this world, you will have tribulation, praise the Lord. But if you think that that situation, that storm, that, that sickness, that financial problem, that whatever the, the enemy's trying to get you to focus on, that circumstance, the adversity, amen, if you think that's the reality, you're not believing God. And if you're not believing God, you're not being thankful. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you think it won't change, if you think it can't change, if you don't think it can be resolved, then the enemy will get you to make stupid decisions. Mm -hmm. Amen? Decisions outside of the will of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. And you'll be pressured to do it. Yep. Not just from yourself, but external pressure will come. You're just being crazy. You need to move on. You need to do this. You need to do that. When I came to Iowa, I was told by one of the biggest uh, prophecy and prophets of, uh, in the United Pentecostal Church at the time, evangelists all around the world, came up to me and said, Nathan, don't go back to Iowa. It's a burnt over field. Nothing happening there. I said, well, I appreciate their, that very much. And I know he was a man of God. I'd... I'd been in many of his services. He, he, he pastored, or pastored, he, he evangelized in our church. We went to all over East Texas and Western Louisiana, large churches where he ministered. And, and I was impressed by him. The guy was, and he was sincere. And it, and it shook me at first. And then I was in the prayer room one afternoon and I was going over all this stuff in my mind. And the Lord said, uh, Who called you? Mm. What's it you did, Lord? He said, then who's going to send you? So, you know, I, it's not that I don't believe in prophetic ministries, mm -hmm. but there's no prophetic ministry that comes for God. That's right. And sometimes people, even prophetic people, are looking in the natural right. and not seeing what God sees right. that he's trying to change. Mm -hmm. People come today. I know people looking over the Internet are looking and saying, what is wrong with this guy? Six people on a Wednesday night? Why have a service? Some Sundays, 10, 12 people. Why bother? Because God's here with those 12 people, and he's doing something that I don't see all the time. Right. There, there are principalities and powers and wickedness and evil in places that we don't always see it, the source. And we can have an impact where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I'll be in the midst of them. And where he is, miracles happen. Stuff happens all the time. Supernatural things happen all the time. And we don't necessarily always see it, but it's still a reality. It's still the truth. So I'm just thankful, amen, that God has me where he has me because anywhere else I would have flopped or failed or gone away or given up or whatever already. I'm, I'm here because he put me here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I think that's true of all of us. When, when we're directed by the Lord, we are where the Lord wants us to be. And we have influence and, and empowered by God to change things in that environment. Now, maybe it isn't what we thought because we give it the eye test like they do in football, you know. And so we're giving it the eye test and we're saying it's not passing. Resume is good, but the eye test is just not looking like it ought to because there's not enough. We're always measuring and judging, and God is looking at something that is supernatural, something that is spiritual, something that you don't always see with the natural eye, but it's more real. Think about it. Everything came out of the invisible. <coughs> this wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the invisible, praise the Lord. So if we can influence the invisible, I'm not worried about the visible. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. The enemy will get you to make these foolish decisions. And the result will be you end up making a permanent decision based on a temporary setback. Yes. That is the definition 
for suicide. I can't take it. I, I, I just can't deal with this anymore. Bang. You had a temporary situation and you dealt with it. Permanent solution. Praise the Lord. I, I saw this acrostic one time. I'll just share it with you. Fear. False evidence appearing real. That's fear. The enemy comes with a false evidence. It appears real, and then we respond to that. It's not real, so our response really has no impact. I mean, if our response is natural, it's not going to change anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. False evidence appearing real. You see, I'm convinced, and I believe this is what the Lord has shown me, that it's not sin that destroys God's people. It's unthankfulness. It's inability to see the way God sees. If we see the way God sees, we can't help but be thankful. We can't help but give thanks Amen. Let me close with this. Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 6 through 13. And we'll quit. Praise the Lord. Be careful for nothing, but in everything. See, don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care hath flourished again wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Praise the Lord. That word doesn't mean satisfied. It just means trusting. Wherever I find myself, I'm going to trust the Lord. Because I know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Verse, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We need, these need to be the mantra that we speak. I got on my side of the bathroom mirror. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My side, the right side, of course, the right side. Amen. But I've got <laughs> post-it notes, half a dozen of them at least. Been there since we lived there, 16 years, 16 and a half years, whatever it is. And I confess them every time I go in there, every time I sh shave, well, where I shave, every time I brush my teeth, every time I comb what little hair is left there. Praise the Lord. I had to give thanks last week. I went to get a haircut. I hate haircuts. Not because I'm particularly fond of long hair. I just hate haircuts. I just hate getting them because they always screw them up. So I went to, I used to go, always go to the cheapest place I could find because I figured they're going to screw it up anyway. Why give them a bunch of money to do it? <laughs> well, I found a place in Ankeny. It's a sports clip kind of place. And I went in there and I got a, a decent haircut here six months ago or so. So my hair was pretty long and I happened to notice in the mirror a couple of times, you, you know, you look pretty weird. So you probably ought to be getting a haircut. So I, wa I just wanted to get it trimmed up. You know, I don't want it shaved. I didn't want, I just, just trim it so it'll lay down or not, you know, go crazy and everything. So I get this gal and I swear she was a psychopath and possibly even a stalker. <laughs> because, she, I, hey, now it sounds like I'm kidding, but I go in there, 
This could have cost me 30 bucks now. Now, I don't spend $30 on a haircut, but I'm going to this time because I figure, well, the last one was pretty good. If, if I only have to do this every six months, it's not bad, you know, I'll, that will be okay. So I go in, and uh, she, you know, the, the usual pattern, you know, you know, what do you want? And I said, look, just leave it full on the sides, just over the ears, round it off in the back, straight across, just trim it up a little bit so everything kind of goes together. I mean, you're the barber, just that's what I want. You want a shampoo? I said, no. I just shampoo. I just had a shower. I don't need a shampoo. I don't need any massaging. I don't need anything other than just a haircut. So I'm doing what I do, trust, you know, and basically eavesdropping on the conversation in the chair to the side of me and just listening. Pretty soon I hear this zzzz. I'm going, what, what, clippers, clippers? <laughs> Why clippers? Why? What has she got clippers? <laughs> Now, I don't have my glasses on because, you know, they can't cut your hair over your ears with glasses on. So I'm looking at the mirror, and I'm thinking, well, I can't really say that it's short. It doesn't, doesn't look short. And she's still, still talking along. How's that looking? And I said, well, I, I, I'll just keep it, you know, full. I don't want it short, and then just kind of blend it in so it all comes together. And she keeps going and round the back, and I'm and then she puts up uh, – you know, I don't know, lotion or something hot on my neck, and she's, like, doing the razor thing on my neck. I'm thinking, what? So this, she's insane. I'm not saying anything because she could slip my throat. She's got a razor right there. So, so she gets pretty, she's done, and she said, well, what do you think? And she, this, I swear to God, she went just like this and just combed it over. First of all, I don't comb my hair that way, but she combs it over this way, and I put my glasses on, I go, I know my, I had to look like I'd just seen a ghost or something, you know. My head was shaved on the sides, and it was that, I mean, it was this long, just right here, <laughs> hanging down. I looked like some, I don't know what, you know, out of, you see these guys every once in a while that are kind of, they did on purpose because they really, and it's kind of some orange in it maybe and green or whatever. I'm thinking, my God. Wait a minute, that can't be right. And I got up out of the chair and I got closer because I'm thinking, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing this. Uh -huh. And she said, what do you think? And I thought, you, you, you're not asking me that. I said, it's, it's, it's too short and it's too long. Right. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. And I said, now I realize you can't do anything about this short, but you're going to have to do something about that long. Uh -huh. I mean, it's got to... Fit. It looked like I'm wearing a hair hat. <laughs> I'm thankful. Thankful. So she cut it down some and, and then combed it back and put lots of stuff on it so I couldn't really see what was going on anymore. Now it's all kind of plastered on the top of my head. And it still looked like I had a ridge around here with all this long hair. Straight, long, stupid looking hair on my head. So I'm thinking at this point, it's time to bail. You get out of here while you still got a head. And I told him before, I said, you know, I, I, she said, well, what color was your hair? <laughs> I said, oh, I realize it's getting a little gray, but I said, uh, well, I said, I tell you, I, I never had a problem with what color it turned as long as it didn't turn loose. So, so anyway, I went up, I pay, and I'm just, at this point, I'm just wanting out of there because I'm thinking, hey, I'm headed for great clips or someplace probably to try to straighten this mess out. So I get in the car and I'm kind of trying to look in the rearview mirror and look at this and I'm thinking, oh Lord, and I've got to go to High V. I I got to pick up some groceries, I got to do this. I said, and I got to parade around in there like, and like I escaped from some lunatic farm. I went home and I, 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 in fact, I came to church the following Sunday with us and I had it as slick and plastered as I could get it to try to, so it didn't look too hideous, you know. I took Monday, I, after I took a shower, and I'm looking at it again, and I'm saying, oh, my God, this is just. And I looked in the back. I swear, you can ask Sally. It was cut from here to here, just like this. I mean, it went just like that. Now, it's too short to do anything more. Honestly, I'm looking in the mirror, and I'm going, wait. Does that look straight to you? It is now. 
So I got her trying to straighten across the back, and she can, you know, she didn't want to go too far. It's, it's going to look like I had the buzz cut from the Marine Corps again. So she trims it off. She didn't want to go any further. She's freaking out because I'm freaking out. So my daughter comes over who went to beauty school. She didn't graduate. <laughs> But I let her loose on this thing because I thought, hey, you can't do any more damage than what's done. So she did get it even across the back, but it still looked ridiculous. I mean, it looked, I don't know, it was just, I'm, I, I never, I mean, I've had bad haircuts, nothing, nothing like this. This thing was like the haircut from hell. So, so finally, the next day I can't take it anymore. I go in and I get out the clippers that I used to trim my beard. <laughs> I put the longest buzz thing on as I could and just I did the whole thing. I just shaved it all off to where it was about that long because that's the only thing that was left to salvage. Don't talk to me about thankfulness, praise the Lord. I know how to be thankful <laughs> when you look like you escaped the kennel. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a day from hell. And you know what day it was? Friday the 13th. <laughs> I didn't realize that until I got back home and I thought, that devil's a liar. <laughs> so anyway, praise the Lord. God is good and the devil is a liar. Right. Praise the Lord. And do not go to, what is the name of that place again? Sports Clips. Don't go, please, unless you're in for a, just a, you know, a thrill ride. <laughs> this was like, Hmm. It was not funny. <laughs> it was horrible. But I, I mean, I could have, I would have liked to have laughed if it had been somebody else. But that thing was this, and I mean, it was clear down here. And she had the audacity. I mean, she had to be on drugs or something. She had to be to say, "How's that?" Give the razor. Oh, well, praise the Lord. God is good. Are you thankful? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's, he's a good God. And we can be thankful even for the bad haircut. Hallelujah. He just gave me the ability to just, I thought, I don't care. I'll go join the Marine Corps again. And we're done and we're out of here. Actually, it came out fairly good. I'm thinking about going to barber school. <laughs> They're making all kinds of money. You don't have to be good at it. Praise God. Amen. So, all kidding aside, just having a little fun. God has a sense of humor. Obviously, he wouldn't have allowed me to go to that barber shop. But, but uh, I think, you know, we just need to, no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, look to Jesus. Don't, don't let the circumstances bog you down and get you so focused on what the enemy's trying to convince you is real. When God has the supernatural reality, which is where all reality comes from available to us, to bless us, to heal us, to deliver us. And all he asks, say thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. See you back here Sunday, hopefully. Stay safe and enjoy the holiday. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.